Cougar. I'm freaking excited, man. It's my first freaking beef wellington. All right. You're in for a treat, David. <laughs> Are you ready, David? Let's Check this out, David. That looks disgusting. Now in order to make an every meat beef wellington, I need something to wrap around. And this is just perfect. To be specific, flat meat. If you've never had this, I'll tell you one thing. It is very popular in South America. So the first thing I needed to do was to chop up to size. So I cut the ends, then I immediately started opening it up. And as I was doing so, you can see that this cut has great marbling. This is always what we're looking for whenever we buy meat. The more marbling, the better. And since this is now ready, it's time to jump on to the next meat. And we're gonna go with lamb. To be specific, rack of lamb. So in order to prepare, the first thing I needed to do was to cut out the bones. Once that was done, I immediately started removing all of the silver skin. Once that was done, I focused only on the loin, getting a nice perfect shape for the wellington. As you can see, it is now ready. Next up, we got this. It is called sweet breads. But there's nothing sweet about this. It's basically organ meat. Now to prepare it, it's pretty simple. I just chopped it up until I got a nice strip. And as you can see, it is absolutely delicious. And Argentinian people just love this. Now to speed things up, I went ahead and plated the rest. And here we got octopus, bacon, Japanese Wagyu A5, grouper, and chicken. Every single one of these meats are delicious by themselves. However, what will happen when we combine all of these flavors together? Well, I have no idea. And I picked all of these meats because I absolutely love them. But again, not together. Talking about that, the next thing to do is the assembly. So I went ahead and started with the flat meat. And for the entire seasoning, I'm going to be using my rub. So I started by adding a nice thin layer of seasoning. Once that was done, I added the lamb, followed by the octopus. Not one tentacle, but two. Oh yes. Next up, we gotta go with the Japanese Wagyu A5. This one should bring a nice richness to this dish. Because the next one is really dry. And we're talking about chicken. But I didn't choose chicken breast. I went with chicken thighs. Next up was bacon. To be specific, smoked bacon. Because another type of meat that can use some smoke would be fish. Whenever you're smoking fish, it just tastes fantastic. So putting it next to the bacon was the key. As now I had some smoked duck also. Again, the strategy is that the smokiness will transfer to the meat. And the same thing goes with the sweet bread, as I put it right next to it. Now, as you can clearly see, every meat is looking delicious by itself. But there was one more that I had to put it in here, and that would be Slim Jim. But now that I have everything ready, it's time for the seasoning. And for that, I just used my barbecue rub. The more, the better. Now to join every single meat together, I'm using this ingredient, gelatin. Hopefully this will combine everything together and make it taste real good. Talking about that, the next step is to go ahead and roll everything up. Then to ensure that nothing was gonna come apart on me, I went ahead and tie it up. Because you guessed it, it needed a little bit more seasoning. So I added that right on top. Because the next thing to do is to go ahead and throw it in the bag, vacuum sealed it, and it is now ready for sous vide. Talking about that, I'll be cooking it at 165 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours. This should cook everything to perfection. Because now as it was cooking, it was time to go ahead and prepare the rest. And the next thing we gotta do is crepes. This will make things look nicer and it will also help with the flavor. I'm just using a premix. You throw it in together with some milk, whisk it up, spray the pan with some oil and start it to cook. It takes no time at all and in just a few minutes you have a bunch of them ready. Because now we have to have a sauce. And to be specific, a red wine reduction. So first I started with a good amount of butter followed by onions. Mixed everything well until I got a little bit of color. Then I added some rosemary followed by thyme. Mixed it a little bit more and added my red wine. Now we want to bring it to a simmer until it reduces to half. Once that's done, it's time to go ahead and strain the whole thing. Let it reduce a little bit more. And in the end, we have a wine reduction sauce. This should be perfect to go along with our welly. Talking about that, by this time it was fully cooked. So I went ahead and threw it on some ice so that it can chill. Then I open up the bag, remove all of the extra juice and take a look at this. Wow. That is something you do not see every day. But just like every meat that comes out of the sous vide bag, it needs a crust. And for that, I'm gonna be using my flamethrower. As now I know exactly what you're thinking. My meat does not look that good right now. But watch this. Everybody in here, we have our beautiful beef wellington, gentlemen. 
Gross, I'm so excited. Is this your first? It's my first. David, you're in for a treat, man. Wait a second, let me show this to you. Check it out. What the f is that? <laughs> we have an amazing beef wellington made out of every single meat there is. It looks like you cleaned out your fridge into this beef wellington. David, that's exactly oh. what happened. Oh no! What's worse than the looks of it is the smell. Oh my God, if you guys could smell this. That is what's catching me right now, oh. the smell. A dumpster is giving it credit. The smell. Oh. <laughs> and I also made a very special, delicious wine reduction sauce. What is that? Are you not excited? It's your first Wellington day. No. I just want the puff pastry and the duck cell and you can keep the rest. Don't judge it until you try it. Enough talking, let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Yeah. <coughs> no, I'm good. I'm sorry, I can't swallow that. <laughs> I guess I'm the last man standing. So I will say this, everybody. This is one of the most insane experiments I've ever done in my life. In my humble opinion, I think this is the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. Really? Yeah, this is a crime against humanity. All of the meats combine into one bite and they all texturally and taste are so different from each other. There's no cohesiveness at all. It just tastes like a bunch of random shit in your mouth. You couldn't pay me to take another bite. Wow, that's how bad it is for you. Yeah. If you've ever smelt like a lunchbox that you left in your truck for a little bit too long, we've all done it, all right? If you've ever opened it and smelt it, that's what that tasted like. It's a little bit overpowering, everybody. Whenever you mix all of the meats together, you're getting the smell from the fish. You're getting the smell from the beef jerky and all of the other meats combined together. It's just not very pleasant when they all combine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you would try it. Maybe not mix every single meat together, but maybe combine some type of meats that would work well. I would love to know from you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. Remember, everything I use is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.